let's go back about 30 years, okay? Do you think it was really common to come home after a long day at work and say, I think I'm going to start my own business? It wasn't. But for those who did want to start their own business back in the day, it would usually take months of planning and strategizing, even to get their business off the ground and running. At that time in life, really, you would have to factor in things like the market, research, capital, labor concerns, location, regulation. And I'm sure there's probably a lot more specific things that we don't necessarily have to think of now. It was complicated back then to start your own business. And I don't really necessarily blame those who didn't want to start their own business. And they would just rather go into the office for the day and make a set income every single month. Starting a business back then, it was just, it was so difficult. But fast forward to today, it's a lot easier, don't you think? Now, don't get me wrong, though. I'm not saying that, like, it's easy, easy to run a business. It still is difficult. But to start a business in today's world, it's not that difficult. Things are just so accessible nowadays. But really, what is my point of saying this? Why am I saying that? Starting a business in today's world is a lot easier than what it used to be. My answer, my friend, three syllable word, the internet. The internet, it has massively transformed how we work, play, make friends, meet partners and connect. If someone who lives in the 60s suddenly time traveled to today's world, they would feel so lost with how powerful the internet is today. Gosh. I even look back and remember dial-up internet or when phones, when we texted using T9. Things are changing and they are changing so, so quickly. Now let's think about what we can actually do right now. Actually, let's take a sec to actually appreciate the internet just a little bit more. I feel like it's something that we use so often, but we never actually think about how it's really changed our lives. Today, you could go on Facebook and Instagram and broadcast yourself. You can broadcast your offer, your talents, your opinions, literally to a million people at one time without having to jump on an airplane or a train to get there. The internet hasn't only changed how we actually share information, it has also changed the way that we receive information. Now, let me ask you this. Do you remember getting physical mail? I know, I still get some bills mailed to me and wedding cards randomly, but really, when was the last time you received a handwritten letter? I think mine was probably when my best friend, she sent me a letter when she was at camp, and I think we were like eight years old. They don't really exist anymore, which is kind of sad if you think about it. Now, I am pretty sure I've kept that letter from my best friend, which I should probably find, so just a note to myself. But regardless, today is a little bit different. We can email, text, FaceTime, direct message, comment, share, like, watch, record, literally anything from anywhere in the world. It's changed how we physically behave as humans. It's also drastically affected the way that we set up a business, how we advertise and how we earn money. Thankfully, these changes are so, so positive in my opinion. But today, you can build your small business from from scratch really, really easily. You don't need a complicated plan. You don't need to have hundreds of thousands of dollars for capital. And you certainly don't have to worry about rent. All you need is a laptop, a phone, an iPad, and an internet connection. And voila, you are able to start your own business from anywhere in the world. So if that's what you're looking for to do, this episode is for you. In today's episode, I won't be just showing you how to start your own online business, but I'm also going to be telling you the different ways that you can go about doing it. So are you ready to get started? Let's dive right in. So the very first step you want to take is coming up with a business idea. So what do you want to do? What do you want to sell? What do you like? Now, what you need to remember is that successful businesses are built on a unique idea. So even if the ideas aren't unique, the mode of execution must be. So for example, selling books, that's not a unique idea. Bookstores have been around for ages, but selling those books on the internet, now that's a revolutionary idea. And that is what made Jeff Bezos into the richest man on earth. Now, of course, you may not be aspiring to hit those Amazon levels just yet, but the valuable lesson to learn from him is that something about your business idea must be unique. So how are you going to find these unique ideas? What I found was helpful for me was to start with your environment, okay? What problem exists right now that you think that you could solve on a large scale? Is there a lack of decent bakeries in your area? Is the grocery store too far away? 
Think of the task that you wish that you can either perform easier and then try to see if you can solve that problem and then monetize that solution. Now, you could also ask your coworkers or your family or friends to really ask them what they would love for you to solve. Ask them what they think that you bring to the table and what you could do. This will give you some ideas of the solution gaps that need filling directly in your environment. Now, what's typically going to happen while you're outlining all these problems is that you're also going to realize where your weaknesses lie. Okay, so you should not start a business just to tackle a problem because it's a problem. You should try to tackle it because you know how to do it or you have the needed experience in doing so. Now, in just the beginning, you'll have a lot of ideas flowing around your head. So sit on it for a minute. Really take your time to think about what it is that you want to do. What will make you happy? What's actually fun for you? Now, remember, it's not going to happen overnight, but once you realize you essentially have this blank canvas, you can paint any picture that you want to. The idea will come for you. Now, if your mind has been running while listening to me and you still have no idea where to start, here are some different ideas or different types of businesses that you can do 100% in the online world. So first up, let's talk about network marketing. So I'm starting with this one because this is the one that led the path for me when I was 18. Network marketing is, it's a fantastic option for those who want to start a business, but you really have no idea where to start. So this is what opened my mind to the entrepreneur world in the first place. Now with network marketing, you get it all really from a product or an offer. You have your own ladder to climb with different promotions that you can hit based on particular goals that you set within the company. And you even have leadership responsibilities. So really you learn it all from a business aspect. But this is where you are selling someone else's product for a commission and you also grow and manage a team that you mentor to sell someone else's product for commission as well. So you do do it in this team environment, which in my opinion, in the online world is amazing because that's that sense of community that you miss when you really aren't in person. Now, another option for you is affiliate marketing. So this is similar to network marketing, but you remove the team based side of things. So this is where you are actually selling other people's products for commission. There's no difference being a car salesman besides being online. And after you can be an affiliate for multiple companies. So I personally, I'm an affiliate for a lot of different companies, products, services, offers, programs. And I also have affiliates for my own programs and my membership sites that I have. Now, social media has made affiliate marketing super easy. Whenever you recommend a product or a service or a program that you love, you share a URL that is coded back to you or a discount code and voila, you get a commission if anyone purchases. It's pretty cool. Now, another option for you is going down the e-commerce route. So this is probably the most common type of online business out there, which actually is pretty interesting because I'm not an e-commerce girl whatsoever. So e-commerce, what that is, is when you are actually selling goods over the internet. So if you think selling is what you're great at, and let's say that you have a unique product that will solve someone's problem, then by all means, get to it, get selling online. There are new yoga pant companies popping up online literally every single time I blink. So shout out to all the entrepreneurs in the online world who are brand new. You are going to love it. Now, one of my favorite paths with the online world is doing online courses or online programs. So no matter how quirky or uncommon something is, there's always someone out there who wants to learn it. So if you have skills or knowledge that you are convinced are sellable, then get them into a course and sell them. So you can record yourself making educational videos. You can create a masterclass PDF. Do whatever it takes to codify that knowledge. You'll be able to pass it on fairly quickly. And more importantly, you'll earn money while passing it on. So I have a few online programs and courses. Now, my signature program, you guys all know this, is the Spotlight Theory. So this is a 12-week program that teaches entrepreneurs just like you how to generate high-quality leads and clients and automation through social media. Now, I also do have a five day social media boot camp program, and I do have quite a lot of online workout programs with my fitness brand, Buff Big. It's something that truly earns money in your sleep. So if that sounds good to you. I highly recommend that route to you. And the last path that I recommend is a service based business. So is there something that you love to do and you would want to repeat that process over and over again for clients? So my digital marketing agency, this is a service based business where we specialize in digital marketing lead generation techniques. 
So my team and I, we work one-on-one -on -one with clients. So this option is a fantastic option to do online and virtual. You still can control your income and your hours and you're working one-on-one -on -one with clients. Now I'm curious, out of those five paths, which one speaks to you the most? And if you don't mind, could you please put that path inside the comments? This will give me an idea of what path that I can actually go more in depth with in some of the upcoming episodes that we're about to be doing. So is it network marketing? Is it affiliate marketing, e-commerce, online programs and courses, or is it service-based? Let me know in the comments if you don't mind. I would really, really appreciate it. But let's move on a bit further. So what happens when you choose your path? What are your next steps? So really, there's two main ones that you need to do. You need to decide on a name, and then you choose a business model. Now, I don't want to sound corny, but your business name is ridiculously important. So a great name, it's either going to make your brand or a bad one will wreck it before you even have a chance to build it. So you need to be extraordinarily careful about what you pick for your name. But in any case, here are some tips to help you get through this. So first off, you could use your nickname if it's safe for work or use your personal name if you're working one-on-one -on -one with clients. That's what I usually recommend right off the bat. Now what this does is that actually introduces your business to people who know you, but maybe who are not inside your current circle. Now, you should also not be scared to use abbreviations. So after all, companies like DHL, they make use of abbreviations and it's working out pretty well for them. Well, generally speaking, anyways, it usually works out well. And lastly, try to merge relevant words. That way people know exactly what your business does and how it can help them quickly. Now, you do also want to make sure that it's something that is short, easy, really rememberable. With a great name, you are right underway to starting a decent business online. So for me, what I have, I have Stock Media Inc., which is my maiden name, and for social media and digital media. So it's a little bit of a merge between myself and what I do type of aspect. Or the Spotlight Theory, completely different. This is a combination of what the end goal of the program is, aka I help you get into the spotlight. And theory is because I walk you through my step-by-step -step approach that I use with my personal clients. Now, I remember when I was naming the Spotlight Theory program, Literally took me months. I wrote down word after word after word. And then one morning I went for a run and then there it was. It came to me. And now it's stuck for years. So once you have your name and it may take time, the next step would be actually to have a plan of action, aka how are you going to earn with this business? Because don't get me wrong, it's great to have a business and to be solving problems. But if you don't have a plan for revenue generation, you'll find yourself out of business pretty quickly. Because even if you aren't making any financial loss, let's say, because you don't necessarily have rent and bigger expenses, you're losing out money in terms of opportunity costs. Now, in my opinion, when choosing a business model, you can either do it the easy way or the hard way. What would you like? The easy way, it's technically a lot longer and requires a little bit more work, but the harder way doesn't require too much, but it's, it's pretty easy on the surface. But the only problem, really, it tends to backfire pretty quickly. So I'd rather give you the easy way. So first off, here's what you need to do. You need to understand your client's requirements. So what do they need right now? And what price would they theoretically pay for that? So you should also be analyzing the buying behaviors or the patterns of your clients. So for example, do they love buying low end products or would they rather save up to get the higher end product? So this should reasonably inform the level of quality of your offering to the market. The next thing that you want to look at is your competition. And I don't mean give them tough times or be really passive aggressive. What you need to do is get close enough to them that you can understand how they are making a profit. And lastly, really lastly, take this one to heart. Do not undervaluate yourself. Understand the value that you're bringing to the market and know your market rate for your expertise. Many entrepreneurs seem to think that it's smart to undercharge a new client because that would make them want to come back and work with you. I can tell you right now and for free, that's not how it works. So don't be bullied or don't be intimidated into undercharging for yourself. It will not do you or your brand any good in the near future. Now, if you haven't started an online business just yet, you're probably wondering if this is, if this is for you, if you're going to be any good at it anyways. That's completely normal. When I was first starting, I thought the exact same thing, but I started it anyways. And that's what I want you to do too. I want you to actually just hear the doubts in your mind. Tolerate that fear in your heart, but start anyways. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And this is one shot you definitely should take. If you do manage to start, you'll quickly find out that the life of an online entrepreneur 
it's difficult, but it's amazing at the same time. It also means you have the utmost control over your life. You determine your schedule. You determine your income. You have the final say of what works and what doesn't work. You can work from literally anywhere in the world that you want to. So if that's in bed, in your home office, on the couch, at the beach, on a boat, well, on an airplane, I've done it all. You do what you want to do. There's literally nothing like it, especially when there are other aspects of your life that you would like to enjoy too. You can do this, my friend. I have complete belief in you. And I hope this episode helps push you forward in one step and gets you that one step closer. But that's all I have for you today. Don't forget, can you please, please let me know in the comments what path your business is going down? I would love to use you guys a little bit more within these episodes so I know exactly what I can be teaching you and I can better guide you forward. But regardless, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate you more than I can actually say, more than I can actually show. So my name is Lisa Ann, and that's all I have for you today. I will see you next week. Bye for now.